I'm Master Chief Mark Hakala. I spent 30 years in the Navy, but I've spent my whole life being intrigued by naval customs, traditions, history, heritage, and uniforms. So I'd like to share some of that enthusiasm with you using some items in my personal collection to get us started. Let's see what's in the sea chest today. Anybody who has served in the Navy over the last three and a half decades is familiar with Broadside. This cartoon, which ran weekly in Navy Times, provided a humorous look at Navy life based on experiences, duties, responsibilities, and interaction with shipmates that are so universal that every sailor could relate to them. Broadside cartoons have appeared on bulkheads, lockers, plans of the day, and desktops. For 34 years, it was a weekly treat to wait and see what the cartoon was going to take a poke at next. Sadly, because of the economic situation in the publishing industry, which hasn't been helped too much by COVID-19, Navy Times ceased running broadside this year. Not to worry though, it will reappear online, hopefully later this year. In addition to their humor, these cartoons captured changes in ships, aircraft, uniform, policies, and procedures throughout that period. So it's worth taking a look at some of these. And the best place to start is with the creator himself, Jeff Bacon. Jeff Bacon grew up in Colorado and California. He went through NROTC at the University of New Mexico and was commissioned in Ensign in May of 1979. For many years, he served as a surface warfare officer. In 1991, he attended the Naval Postgraduate School in Monterey, California, and earned a Master of Science in Meteorology and Oceanography. And he stayed in that specialty for the remainder of his career. Jeff served in the Navy for over 26 years, rising to the rank of Captain. His final assignment on active duty was as Deputy Oceanographer of the Navy, which I have to say sounds pretty darn impressive. Since his retirement in 2005, Jeff has worked tirelessly to support the troops, particularly wounded warriors. Jeff was able to get many of his fellow cartoonists together to offer their services to the USO. This group went on tour. They visited military hospitals, VA hospitals, ships, four deployed troops, including in Afghanistan. And while that was fantastic, it wasn't enough. In 2010, he co-founded the Wyken Foundation, which is a nonprofit that enables severely wounded and injured veterans to achieve personal and professional success as business and community leaders. It provides mentoring, education, and a host of other resources. Jeff drew his first broadside cartoon for Navy Times in March 1986. In the ensuing years, he was able to compile his best works into four different books. The Best of Broadside in 1992, Book Two, The Rest of Broadside in 1998, 20 Years of Broadside in 2006, which when I told him about this video, he made it a point to insist, don't forget to say that you wrote the forward, which was a humbling honor for me. And his fourth book, Underway with Broadside in 2017. While it isn't currently available, it should be available probably on Amazon later this year. In 2006, Jeff was asked to do a cartoon for Marine Corps Times, which he entitled Greenside. Here is Jeff's very first cartoon. Now, if you notice the sailor to the left who has his hands over the rail, there's an interesting story behind that. Jeff was a self-taught artist, and he said that at that time he didn't know how to draw hands. Since then, he has developed a crisp, unique style that helps him to tell his stories. In the early 2000s, when I worked at the Navy Memorial, I had the chance to meet Jeff Bacon when I was putting together an exhibit of his work. He is, without a doubt, one of the nicest, kindest, and most generous people I have ever met. And some might suggest that's saying an awful lot for somebody who spent that many years as a SWO. So why don't we take a look at his process in creating a cartoon? Once he has an idea for a cartoon, Jeff sketches it out in pencil. 
he uses guidelines and grid lines for text and other elements of the cartoon. He'll erase these later. Once he's satisfied with the composition, he'll go ahead and ink it, covering the pencil lines with ink. The next step is shading. For many years, this was a labor-intensive process. He'd have to take acetate sheets with little dots on them and cut them out to the specific shapes within the cartoon and apply them individually. Nowadays, with the advances of technical jiggery-pokery, he can do this digitally. For years, the cartoon appeared in black and white. Last several years, it's been in color, so the final step would be adding color, which he'd also do digitally. Here was the first cartoon I ever saw of Broadside, and this one I cut out and put up on the bulkhead. At the time, I was assigned to a Marine Corps Infantry Battalion, so this resonated quite highly with me. A few years ago, Jeff was asked what his favorite cartoon was, and it was this particular one. From here, I've assembled a selection of broadside cartoons to let you just take a look at and enjoy. For the most part, I'll let you check these out in peace and quiet, except maybe in a case or two where there's a particularly interesting story to tell about an individual cartoon.
This is one of my all-time favorites. Jeff told me that he had the idea for this cartoon, but he just didn't know how to draw a face smashed up against the glass like this. So he had to enlist the aid of his poor wife, Rebecca, and have her press her face up against the glass, and then he went outside and figured out how to draw it from there.
This one is special. I asked Jeff if I could trouble him maybe to do a, a small cartoon for my retirement brochure. And he went full throttle. My retirement ceremony was on a Saturday. The day before, Friday, was my father's funeral at Arlington. So I thought it was very kind of him to include a reference to my father. Check back soon for more content. Thanks for watching.